Hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to my class today. Uh, I'm going to be teaching you uh, a little bit of the techniques that I use to take dispensary flour and turn this green into gold. That's essentially what I do. I got into this primarily to save myself money. Concentrates cost about $100 a gram on average. Uh, I'm buying flour that's, you know, 60 bucks an inch, and I am getting medicine out of it that would cost every bit as much as the stuff you're buying at the dispensary. But I'm getting the strings that I need, and I think you get a much better quality product in the end. You don't have to worry about any chemical residues or anything like that. What I'm doing right now is I'm preparing some parchment paper for this press. Now, this is an extraordinarily large amount that I'm going to be pressing this on. I generally am pressing just eights, okay, uh, for my own medicating purposes. Occasionally, uh, I have some patients that come over, and uh, I help them out too uh, with some pressing services. So. We want all of this rosin to flow right off the front of the plates. So I need to make sure that the direction this is going to take is exactly what I want it to be. And we'll get to that in a second. So basically I've got, I've got my back sealed up here. Now I'm gonna take each of these open sides and I'm gonna fold them in towards the center. Okay, like a little three-sided envelope. This keeps all of the material flowing out the front. So I'm gonna take a little bit off the front of this. Now we got the press starting to settle into its temperatures. Okay. So basically, we've got ourselves a little envelope here. Now, a lot of people think that you can buy dispensary flour and just start pressing it. And I'm here to tell you, you're gonna be sadly disappointed. Um, I don't care who makes it. Every bit of dispensary flour is too dry to press as it is. You do not get the kind of yields that you need to get to medicate effectively. So, what I did was, I listened to a buddy of mine who was a chiropractor, and he told me about using fresh spinach leaf. He said it works in hours. I didn't believe him at first. But if any of you have bought dispensary flour, you know exactly how it feels when it comes out of the container, right? So, all it is is fresh spinach leaf. I had it in this container for about six hours. I'm gonna take this around and I'll let you check it out because it has fully rehydrated, okay? It's not dry, it's nice and sticky and squishy, okay? It doesn't impart any of the flavors, okay? It turns from dry to just ready to press, okay? Fresh spinach leaf is something that you need to be using if you're real serious about making medicine here. So, <clears throat> another thing is the bags that you use. Uh, there's different manufacturers that make different kinds of bags. I prefer the ones made by Nut Snasher, even though I don't prefer their equipment. Um, for the type of pressing that I do, uh, they're, they're constructed properly. Now, when I'm pressing an eight, this is a size bag, okay? But today we're pressing a half ounce, so <laughs> got a little bit bigger bag here. Okay, I just wanted to show you the size difference. This is pretty much for daily getting my medication out. This is for when I really need to make a lot of medicine for the month. Okay, providing I'm pressing all one strand. Now, you can mix a bag up, you can have all kinds of fun with it. But uh, I like to keep everything separate and then when it's time to make a hybrid, and mix rosins, I can get the kind of effect I'm looking for. So I can wait until afterwards. So 
I'm going to dump these in here, and then I'll let everybody see this half ounce that we're going to turn into some really fine medicine. Sorry, you just got to bear with me a moment. Hey, Eric. Yeah. Is the music okay? Do you want to Music's know? fine. No, that's all good. This is informal. I'm not, you know, yeah. I'm not some kind of professor. I'm just, like I'm just here trying to pass on some knowledge. Well, actually, on 420, I was at the Milldale Public Library doing just this thing. Yeah, how yeah. about it? At the library. Yeah, I, yeah, I met the chief, of, the assistant chief of police from Milldale. This seems like a pretty cool dude. He didn't have a problem with what I was doing either. See, a lot of people question the legality of this, and the thing is, if you're a patient, what I'm doing isn't illegal. Okay, as long as I'm not giving my medicine to somebody else, and if I press their medicine for them, I have to give it all back to them, which is, you know, the way it should be. So, we got all of our flour butter. And this stuff is ringing in at 20, 20, 22%, or I'm sorry, 20, 26%, 26%. So, here it is. Here's your half ounce. Uh, we're gonna put this thing in this bag. And we're gonna try to make a cylinder out of it. Let's get these in here. The, the whole point is you wanna try and remove as many voids as you're packing this in there as possible because voids are places where the oils can get trapped and reduce your yield. And the thing is, out of all the ways that you can make concentrates, this is the greenest way to do it. There's no chemicals need, that need to be used. There's no purging that needs to happen afterwards because you're trying to get rid of residual chemicals. This is just heat and pressure. It's the most natural way to make concentrates. Um, and they make very fine concentrates when you do it properly. So, we got our bag. We're going to try to get this thing pressed down as best we can in here. Some people, when they're pressing larger amounts, use pre-presses. And if you're doing flat packing, which is a different method of pressing, a uh, different way of orienting the bags, uh, that's fine. But for the kind of pressing I'm doing, this works out just great. So. We compacted that down, basically into a slug. We're going to trim the excess material, about a little more than a half an inch above. I'm going to trim in the extra little threads that come off of here. The nice thing is, I can do this with CBD flour too. Pressed some yesterday, came out really, really nice. And that's like 50 state legal stuff you can get at any vape shop. Okay, there's our slug. Now, most presses are just vertically oriented presses. You put it in there and you try and take it off the heat. This press has the ability to do what's called drip tech, which means I can tilt this forward 90 degrees and it gets off the heat faster. It keeps it more stable, preserves more of the terpenes. That's what we're going to do today. When you're doing just an eighth, can't really do that. But with this, we should have a gusher. This stuff is a really good strain to press. So I'm gonna load this up. Get centered on here. Okay, so Bring the plates together, put a little tension on this bag. All right. Uh, we got a little tension in there. I can get the paper kind of out of the way here so that you can see a little bit better what's going on. Hang on a second. That's the other thing about this process. It's never always, nothing ever goes exactly the way you want it to be. You have to make adjustments. You have to be 
able to adapt to what the plant is doing and technical issues that you come up with. And that just takes practice. That's just doing it over and over and over again. I keep a database, all of my presses, so I know which strains are producing for me. Okay, so you're probably going to want to get closer to this press when it starts producing because you're going to want to see what's going on here. Um, <laughs> you guys that heat is going to start so working in that plant it. material yeah. and it's going to force all of the good stuff out. So. Put a piece of paper in Kenji and all of this. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Right down here. Now, if you watch this bag, <laughs> as you watch this bag, you're going to see it start to get moist along the, the edges, top and bottom. You're going to see it start to moisten up, and then you're going to see it start to flow material. Okay. Now, right here, this weighted handle is now helping me to keep from overpressurizing this material. You see how it's moving all on its own? As the heat continues to work through the material and force the medicine out, which should start happening very quickly here. There it is. Right on the bottom edge of here, it's starting to starting to flow some material now. And it should look beautiful. Okay. You see all that? See it starting to starting to come up? Please feel free to video, take pictures, anything you want, post it on your on your social media. Um, I mean this to help other patients out. So that heat is starting to work in, in the moisture that we reintroduced into the flower. It's causing that, that moisture to steam and that forces everything out that you want to get. So we're just continuing to treat this very gently. You don't want to have a, your bag blow out and, and contaminate it. Okay, now we're seeing some color. Getting that color, right? Look how pretty that is. You won't get this kind of color from any kind of thing that you get off the street. You gotta get dispensary flower to get quality like this. And as I keep gently adding more pressure, you're seeing the flow start to happen. So. Let's tilt this thing forward and see if it decides to grace us with some nice medicine. This is one of those things you can't rush it, you know? It, it's like any other craft, like brewing your own beer or something. It takes patience, it takes a love of this plant. Um, if you're in a hurry, you're not going to make good rosin. It's one of those things you got to kind of devote yourself to. Now you can look up underneath here, you can see where it's just about ready to start falling. Can you see that up under there? Now watch this. Come on now. Uh, hook it in right there, let that heat continue to do its thing. This stuff's getting ready to drop. And it's so, so nice looking right there. You can get your cameras up underneath here and you can see this a lot better. See right up under there? That's what's going to drop down on that paper. You might want to get your camera out of the way because it's getting ready to go right now. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Big old. There's our medicine, everybody. Just gotta be patient. Whatever rewards you. Nice. 
with absolutely beautiful medicine, every bit as good as the stuff you buy from any of the dispensaries at $100 a gram, this stuff's quite a bit less to make. Yeah. <clears throat> Plus yeah, you can this, choose your own strains, your own variety. Exactly, Next. because there's only so Next. many strains oh. that they can make into concentrates. Yep. I can buy any flour available now. Mm -hmm. Having said that, and because I keep a, a very concise database of everything I press, higher THC strains produce more, okay? Mm -hmm. I try not to press anything that's under 25% THC because in the end it just doesn't give me the, the yield that I need to get. Um, I have to have a balancing act. Some people press at lower temperatures than I do, but I have to get a certain amount of yield every time I press. The only way I can ensure that is to press it at 200 degrees, which is a moderate temperature. How much do you typically get from like when you press like a half ounce of that, that specific strain? I don't know. Oh, you never done that one before. My first time pressing a half ounce of, of this particular is that strain. That double acting? Yeah. Now, historically speaking, I pressed this strain a couple of times over the last two years. Uh, it's always produced at least a gram uh, from every eight. Yeah. So, uh, again, you just got to be patient with the heat work, with the pressure work, and try not to be too aggressive with it. And it comes out beautifully. And after a while, after you do it for a while, you get to really get the feel for it. And leak right yeah, there. Nice oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna let that let that heat continue to uh, to do the heavy lifting here. Yeah. Um, I love making this. I got a couple. This is show you the thing that I got. It's an electronic. Oh yeah, this stuff is just continuing to give itself over. And you see, that was the very first, the very lightest colored stuff was the first. And now it's starting to darken up a little bit as we move along down the process. But I don't think we're burning any terpenes yet, so I'm inclined to let it keep doing its thing. Yeah, there we go. Get a little more out of it. The quicker you can get it off the heat, the better the quality is going to be. Eric, there's so much just waiting. Oh, I know. Yeah. It is ridiculous. I know. Yeah. Just got to be patient and let, let gravity work. That's the whole point of this press. I get a gravity assist and I get really, really nice medicine from that. Yeah, oh, it's delicious. It's a nice color. Yeah, yeah, this is a really, really great strain. I like it a lot. But I think that we are getting towards the end of what we're going to get here. I don't think we're going to get any more drips off of it. Uh, that's going to drip down on the paper. But if you look at what we have here. Okay. Everybody see that? So I'm going to give it just a bit, a bit more. <laughs> okay, now you see, it's not pushing a lot of material now as I'm continuing to add pressure. So, what you run into is a danger of blowing out your bag if you're not careful. So, I'm just, you do this by feel. And this is just something you get from experience. You can't expect to get super awesome results every single time. This is a learning process. Every strain I press, I learn something new, you know. They all cure differently, they all produce differently. But that's the nice thing about this, you know. You, you, you never stop learning, you know. It's, I really dig doing this a lot. There we go. These big bubbles went. I think we're gonna get ready to pull this off of here. And that we've gotten all of the best we're gonna get off of this. Ready? Ooh. Okay. So. Bring this over here. And 
this. Make sure you record it. Okay. Stop. Now, you want to know a couple of things at this point. You want to know how much we got for our effort. That's what the scale is for. And then I'm going to show you how nice it actually looks. Oh, we had a blowout. We sure did. That's okay, though. See, again, stuff happens in the real world, right? This is a perfect example. I overpressurized this press, and I blew this bag way out. But it's not the end of the world. This goes in here, becomes edibles later on. Oh, Nothing yeah. ever goes to waste yeah. with this process. Yeah. That's what I really, really like about it. Yes. Okay, so now, what you have is some contamination here, so you just need to take your time. You need to get it, get it out of there. You see, it's really not that hard to do. You just, you know, take your time, get all the stuff that isn't robbing. <laughs> this and you want to cool it down gently <laughs> not too quickly if you don't have the money to buy a metal plate like this if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get yourself a, an 8 inch square of porcelain tile it does the same thing it's basically it's a uh, thermal mass that you can use to control the cooling rate of this stuff so Let's see how stable this is, shall we? Yeah. Stuff should come right off of the paper. You want it to be nice and light colored like this. You want it to gather upon itself like this. You don't want to have to shovel it because it's too sappy. Cook it too high, cook it too long, and you ruin the consistency of it. You burn off all your terpenes and you basically ruin your medicine. You know, um, to do this right, it really takes a lot of dedication. You can't really half-ass your way through this. You know, it's just not going to work out well for you. Look at how this is down. This is just, this is what happens when you show love to this plant. It shows you love back and down every time. That's just gathering up. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. So, I like to put your on the stand. On the on the stick. Sure. I don't think I can. Storage is full. Alright, so you want to find out how much we got, right? I like how it says to oh, when you turn it on. Yeah. Oh. Three eight. Nice. Three point three eight grams. Nothing. Oh, cool. I need to write that down from my database. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. All my presses go into yeah. go into a database. I keep it online. I give everybody access to it, so that when you get started doing this yourself, you know where not to put your money. What strains work, which ones don't. 
and you will not get good presses out of every strain, I can promise you. I have some that I was expecting great things from that turned out really, really bad. So. Yes, please. This is my favorite part. When you get a little squish, you can show what the structure of it looks like. It really is amazing. And that'll cure over a couple of days. Oh, this will cure into some beautiful wax. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, I mean, it's good to go just as it is, right? There's your medicine. It's really cool when you backlight it, you can see, okay, see that, there it is, so, any questions, do they have any questions about how this works, um, any questions about equipment? I have a question, Sure. what are some ways you could recycle your used material? Well, that's, that's a good question. Like I said, this is the, the greenest way to do extractions because when you do chemical extractions and you run it through the plant material, it's done. Well, all my pucks still have medicinal value to them. There's still residual cannabinoids in here. So when this gets full, it's about three ounces worth of pucks. I cook them out into um, liquid coconut oil and I extract. Okay everything out of it and then I make edibles from that. Yeah. And then I have vape equipment at home that I used to vape my concentrates with. I clean them not with isopropyl alcohol but with 190 proof ever clear. I make a tincture that's food safe and I can take that and reduce that down into FICO or I can use it as is as a tincture. There's all sorts of things you can use it for. So I get every single penny of value from every dollar I spend at the dispensary. That's what this is about for me. Um, again, you don't have to have purge ovens with this. This is a one stage process, green to gold, period. Um, the cost of the equipment can be prohibitive. Um, my first press cost $500, my next one was six, this one is nine, um, but a press of this caliber by any other company that's on the market is going to run you three. My guy builds them by hand out in California, so if you want a rosin press that does what this thing does, take one of his cards and order one. He stands behind his products. And they're user serviceable, that's the other thing. You get nut smasher, something goes wrong, they'll fix it, and you gotta ship it to them out in California. Here, I do four screws, I take this pump out and replace it in 10 minutes. I'm back up and running. You know, it's a, it's a very, very well-made press. It suffered damage in shipping, and it still works. You know, so, uh, he's definitely the man to talk to if you wanna get serious about pressing rods. Thank you for joining me for this class. I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to be doing another one probably in a couple of months. I'll be looking for it. Until then, stay safe, stay medicated, and be good to each other.